Now, of course, we all know very well that brands like Atat Libre d'Orange certainly know how to make groundbreaking and avant-garde creations. Everything from like this to Fat Electrician to Secretions Magnifique, there is no denying the uniqueness of the brand. Well, today we have a fragrance that smells like skin, so it has this warm skin accord with some other very unique ingredients, including yuzu, musk, and jasmine. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance called The Ghost in the Shell, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin my fragrance review of The Ghost in the Shell by Etat Libre d'Orange and I tell you all about this fragrance, what it smells like, what notes or accords are really prominent on my skin, and also try to compare it to other fragrances. I do want to start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do put out new reviews, top 10 videos, giveaways, and more. And also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. Now, I do know that Twisted Lily does carry the brand and they have pretty much every fragrance from Metal Libre d'Orange, if I'm not mistaken. And if you want to use the code RedAlescence10, I don't get a kickback from this, but if you do want to use that code, you can get 10% off your purchase. So I would encourage you to use that code. This way you can get a discount on top of the already low price of the 50 ml bottle, which if I'm remembering correctly, should be under a hundred bucks. So if it sounds interesting to you, I would go ahead and sample it, but then you can also utilize that code RedAlescence10 to get even more money off your purchase. So here we have a fragrance that has a lot of unique ingredients in it. There's Orkinox, if I'm remembering correctly, which is a synthetic ingredient. And it's a type of white amber, but it's supposed to smell like skin. So there's like this milky skin accord in here that kind of comes across smelling a little bit warm. It's a little ambery. You have this bright, fresh yuzu opening. And then you have this really clean jasmine in the heart. So it comes across as a rather simple fragrance, but it's a unique fragrance nonetheless. And so, you know, trying to compare it to other milky, ambery, musky fragrances that I own, I can't quite think of any other fragrance that smells explicitly like this one. So kind of going along with what I was saying at the beginning of the video, Etat Libre d'Orange really does a great job of putting out unique creation. In any case, I'm excited to get a little bit more in detail in regards to the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So of course, as soon as you spray this one on, the first thing that you're gonna notice about it is that bright citrusy yuzu ingredient. Now, many of you probably know yuzu fruit or the, you know, the citrus fruit from fragrances like L'Odyssée pour Homme by Issey Miyake. Of course, yuzu is used in many other perfumes as well, but uh, I do get a lot of that really bright, tart, and citric opening that comes across rather effervescent and slightly refreshing. I usually reserve that adjective for like aquatic or oceanic fragrances, right? It just kind of gives off like a refreshing vibe. Here, it's a really nice accent to the clean jasmine. Now, of course, my experience, jasmine <laughs> can sometimes be very musky and animalic on account of the indole that is found in there, which is a naturally occurring ingredient. But then jasmine can also smell rather clean and pure. And of course, if you've smelled, you know, the aroma of jasmine flowers sort of carried by the wind, it's a really beautiful and breathtaking aroma. And that's what I'm getting from this fragrance. So the jasmine comes across rather pure and innocent. And I think the magic happens when you combine that pure and innocent accord to that sort of you know, milky skin accord. <laughs> I know it sounds really unique and interesting, and I do think ultimately this fragrance is rather unique. So it gives off this smell of clean skin, and it's almost like a warm embrace, right? Like you're getting hugged by something or someone. Now, of course, a person's skin or the smell of a person's skin would be entirely dependent on their diet, their pH levels, and various other factors, right? Um, if they recently worked out or something like that. So this one doesn't smell, 
It smells musky, but it doesn't smell musty, right? There's nothing unclean or dirty smelling about it. It actually smells very warm and sensual, uh, a little flirtatious, slightly romantic, and slightly cozy as well. It's so hard to describe it, but it definitely opens up smelling very bright and clean on account of that yuzu and jasmine combination, but you give it a chance to dry down and you have like this white, amber, and musky base that is kind of billowy. And I know it also says there's vinyl Gaia call used in this fragrance. So I would guess, uh, you know, on account of the name Gaia call, that it's supposed to smell like Gayak wood. And Gayak wood for me has always been one of the cleaner, smoother smelling woods, very much like sandalwood, which lies in direct contrast to the smell of perhaps cedar wood or agar wood, which can sometimes be kind of peppery and animalic smelling respectively. But in the case of this fragrance, yes, it does smell clean. It does smell fresh in the opening, and there is this sort of warm and sensual component as well. Now, I actually had my wife smell this one because she is a fan of musky fragrances, specifically Musk Therapy by Inicio Parfum, and she loved this one. Now, she hasn't smelled it on me, so I do have to be honest about that, but she smelled it after I sprayed it in the box, and she goes, I love this one. So I surmise that this is gonna be one of the fragrances that she's gonna keep in our bedroom so that she can wear it in the morning before work, but it's really, really nice. I love how there's that interplay between the fresh, clean elements of the fragrance, but then there's also like this sort of human, very warm and sensual quality about it. It's a beautifully done fragrance and very unique as well. And of course, from a brand like Italie Berderange, I was expecting something kind of on the avant-garde side of things. So very well done. I would definitely recommend you sample this one, especially if you can find it online at a website or a storefront where they actually do allow you to sample it. I think you're gonna do just fine with this one. So exceptionally well done. I'm very happy with this and I'm so happy that I acquired it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, definitely unique. I mean, I've tried some other musky jasmine fragrances, but it's the inclusion of all these other ingredients in there that give it that sort of milky skin accord without being overly lactonic that does make it smell rather sensual and unique and it gives it that layer of originality that I always seem to find with Etat Libre d'Orange fragrances. Longevity on this one was about seven hours on my skin. The projection was great for the first hour of application, especially while that yuzu was going strong. And gotta keep in mind, it's not an overly bitter yuzu or anything like that. Just gives you this general citrus freshness that is very, very likable. It didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about that four and a half to six hour mark. But this one is a little deceptive in the sense that there's that milky skin accord. And so at one point, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be like, wait, am I smelling the fragrance or is that just my skin, right? Especially if you press your skin right up to your nose, it can be a little deceptive. I think versatility on this one is great. I'd probably wear it in every single season except for the winter, because in terms of a lot of the ingredients that are in here, the jasmine, the musk, it is a little bit on the softer side of things. So I think it would work well in every season except for the winter time. This one can be worn formally and casually, casually because of the vibe that it gives across, but also because of the price point. It is more on the inexpensive side of things, but I would wear this one formally as well because it's rather unique and I perceive it to be the type of fragrance that you would get complimented on. Perfectly unisex and I think anybody of any age would enjoy this one very much. In terms of the presentation, I love the name. I know Anime Day is coming up on April 15th and so of course, this fragrance is one way to celebrate that, but I do love that sort of um, soft feel to the bottle. It kind of feels like skin a little bit. It's almost like rubbery in its appeal. I love the color, how it's this bright sort of pinkish, milky complexion, and the name is also rather cool. And of course, we know where it takes its influence from. My final verdict on this fragrance is, if you are a fan of slightly citrusy, clean, jasmine, musky fragrances. Definitely check this one out, especially if you're looking for fragrances that lean on the romantic and sensual side of things. There's something here that you will potentially love very much. So thank you so much for watching. That was my review of The Ghost in the Shell by Etat Libre d'Orange. If you own or have tried this fragrance or anything from this brand, please let me know what you think. 
leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this review or if you took something of value from today's video, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified on all of my future uploads and give this video a thumbs up as it would greatly assist with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow.